Gopi Janakala Bhaktir Vardhali Yashudana Dana Brajajana Anjana Yashudana Dana Brajajana Anjana Yashudana Dana Brajajana Anjana Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Parivraja Kacharya Asto Thrasatat Sissimad is Divine Grace. Hello back to Vidanta Saraswati Thakur Goswami Prabhupada Maharaj. Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa. Parivraja Kacharya Asto Thrasatat Sissimad is Divine Grace. Namacharya Srila Haridasa Guru Ki Jai Prem Sikha Hausi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Si Advaita Gadadhara Si Pasadi Si Gaura Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Si Siradha Krishna Gopal Gopinath Si Amakunda Radha Kunda Girigabhadana Ki Jai Sabindavan Dham Ki Jai Si Mathura Dham Ki Jai Si Mayapa Navadip Dham Ki Jai Si Jaganapura Dham Ki Jai Ganga Maya Yamuna Maya Ki Jai Si Matatul Si Devi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Sama Veda Bhakti Vena Ki Jai Nithai Gaur Premanandi Our glory is to the sum of the votaries Our glory is to the sum of the votaries Our glory is to the sum of the votaries Our glory is our glory is to the Guru and Guranga
Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrita Naram Cheva Narutam Devim Saraswatim Vyasat Tattu Jaya Muti Rait Nastapai Subhadisu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavaiti Naistiki Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 3, Chapter 4, Text 35 Title of this chapter is Vidura Approaches Maitreya Vidura Approaches Maitreya Atmanam Chakuru Srista Krishnena Manasik Sitam Dhyangate Bhagavate Rurodha Prema Vivalaha Atmanam Chakuru Shrista Krishnena Manusik Sitam Dhyangate Bhagavate Rurodha Prema Vihwalaha Atmanam Charu Kuru Shrista Krishnena Manasik Sitam Dhyangate Bhagavate Rurodha Prema Vivalaha
What word translation? Translation and purport. By his divine grace, his confounded child. Sila is he back to be done to Swami Prabhupada Kija. Sila Prabhupada Kija. Sila Prabhupada Kija. Atmanam. Atmanam. Himself. Himself. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Guru Srista. Guru Srista. Obes amongst the Gurus. Krishnena by Krishna Manasa by the mind Ikshitam remembered Dhyayam thus thinking of Gati having gone Bhagavate of the devotee. Ruruda cried loudly. Prima Vivalaha overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. Translation Understanding that he was remembered. By Lord, by Lord Krishna, while quitting this world, Vidura began to cry loudly, overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. Please kindly respond to repeat. Understanding that he was remembered by Lord Krishna while quitting this world, Vidura began to cry loudly. Overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. Overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. Hmm. Purport. Vidura was overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love when he understood that Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, thought of him at the last moment. Although he thought of himself as insignificant, he was remembered by the Lord, by his causeless mercy. Vidura accepted this as a great favor. And thus he cried. This crying is the last word in the progressive part of devotional service. One can cry for the Lord in love. One who can cry for the Lord in love is certainly successful in the line of devotional service. Om Gyanu Tumirandasya, Gyanu Janasalakaya, Saksur, Om Meditam, Jaina Tisma, Si Gurave Namaha. So Jaitanya Manoam Vistam, Stavvetam, Jaina Bhutale, Swayam Rupam Kadamayam, Dadati Swa Padantikam. Vandi Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Nityananda Sahodhita, Gododaya Puspavantu, Chita Chandu, Tamam. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadarara, Siva Sadi, Sri Gaur Bhakta Vinod. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Understanding that he was remembered by Lord Krishna, while quitting this world, Vidura began to cry loudly, overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love. So, um, love is a very common theme in our spiritual tradition, our devotional tradition, because the whole process of devotional service is Krishna, Prema, Puma to Moha. To attain pure love for Krishna. And in the Bhagavatam gives uh, express delineation about people who have uh, attained this pure love for Krishna. So that is not a fiction. This is uh, 
a Vedic, uh, Vedic historiography. So these are documented incidents of the past. People who tread on the, on the part of Bhakti, people who worship the Lord, <clears throat> and uh, establish a relationship with the Lord, and the ultimate outcome. So people cry in general, uh, and they produce hot tears. You're in pain, you cry. But this is not this type of crying. Crying is not a, 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 big, a good thing in the material world. My prophet says, this is the very, the very last <clears throat> sentence Prabhupada mentions. One who can cry for the Lord in love is certainly successful in the line of devotional service. So Vidura uh, is exemplifying this very success in devotional service. People want to do something and they want to be successful. So we have to keep uh, the goal in mind, the ultimate goal of our services to Krishna, the ultimate goal of our services to Srila Prabhupada, the ultimate goal of our services to the assembled devotees. Because if we have that goal as a focus, then whatever we want to do, we, have to, we could ask ourselves, is it going to lead me to the ultimate goal? Is it going to facilitate my attainment of the ultimate goal? Because when we come to a devotional service, also there are so many, so many distractions. Yeah. <laughs> in the beginning, we could be very serious, and then we associate with uh, some devotees. We become the seriousness, the intense the seriousness becomes very intense. And at the same time, if we associate with um, other types of devotees, our seriousness begins to win. I remember when I joined a temple. So um, there were a number of brahmacharis there before I joined. So one day I was speaking with one of the older devotees there. And the president, he saw me. And he said, he called me. And he said, hey, come here. <laughs> so I went to him. And he told, you know what he told me? I should not see you standing with that devotee again. So I was wondering, what is going on here? These are all the folks there, and the president is telling, <laughs> telling me not to, not to associate with him. But you know what? After just in seven days, the guy blooped. He blooped. He left. So, um, Devotion and service requires that we work under some guidance. Because the tendency is that I stay around a temple for some time, so I take initiation, and then I'm independent now. I go on, I go ahead to do whatever I deem fit. That will not take us to Krishna Prema. Even a very simple Sadhana that we do every day, the chanting. In the Ten Offenses, it is mentioned in the uh, Puranas that one who does not guide against these ton, Ten Offenses may chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra for thousands of lifetimes. He will not attempt Krishna Prema. So it is that serious. And Krishna does not give this pure love so easily. And therefore, we have to or try to understand in a deeper, in a deeper way how to be able to attain the success of our devotional endeavor. We have seen Vidura busted out crying by hearing that Krishna remember, remembered him. And the one good thing in this very episode is that, in this very Leela, is that if even we forget Krishna at the time of death, Krishna will, will enable us to remember him. 
all Krishna will remember us. So the typical case here is Vedura's situation. It's not that he remember Krishna. Krish, he loved Krishna so much that Krishna, you see, yam yam vapis maram bhavam, tad jate antikalevra. The ultimate test, the litmus test, the blue litmus test in devotional service is that we remember Krishna at the time of death. But here Krishna is remembering his devotee when he was when he was leaving the world. <laughs> so the devotion that a devotee has, that is what could purchase the Lord. The undivided devotion of a devotee is the unconditional service we render. That is what could purchase the Lord. The Lord is worshipped by so many sages, great, great sages. But in Vrindavan, Nanda Maharaj asked Krishna to bring his wooden shoes, and Krishna put the wooden shoes on his head. That's a devotee. Krishna is in his service. So devotional life is a very deep process. So my papa writes in the Nectar of Devotion, chapter 31, how uh, he, he makes reference to the 10, 11 canto and the 7 canto on regarding the symptoms of uh, some of the symptoms of pure devotional service. So he was stretching on this point about crying, uh, horripilation, jubilation. As so a Prabhupada makes a comment there that he had these symptoms are there, these pure love, symptoms of pure love are there. But sometimes the devotee could be overwhelmed. So here it is mentioned that, and the Papa, Papa, Papa also mentioned that uh, if I find in the main text, it is indicated how, and in the proper, is, is proper mentions how Vidura was overwhelmed by the pure love. People don't just cry, intentionally cry. In fact, the pure devotee covers all of his loving symptoms for Krishna. But sometimes they are overtaken. <sighs> They are wiped over. But it just shows that what the part we are treading on is real. It's practical. And if we prosecute the part meticulously under the guidance of the spiritual master, we will attain the ultimate goal. These incidents are not just put in the literature for, you know, for folk tale, for, for just some stories. It's to give us the impetus, to give us the motivation that, yes, other people will have attained that pure love for Krishna. I too can. And there's no need for procrastination. Because... We could go and procrastinating and we never achieve the ultimate goal. Yes, the devotee will pass through even a crash program in order to attain the ultimate goal. But if we understand clearly that we need to attain that ultimate goal, we will not procrastinate. We will pass through the crash program with all dignity. So we come in the beginning to devotional life we are very ecstatic, we are very serious. And so sometimes the intensity of the seriousness wanes. And so sometimes people ask, why is that? When I came, I was very serious. I was waking up very early in the morning, 3 o'clock, 2.30, 2 o'clock. Now I'm not interested in even waking up to come to Mangarati. Why is that? I was very much enthused reading Prabhupada's books. Now I hardly read. Why is that? 
I don't take any boga outside. I it take only prasadam from the temple. But now I go outside and I buy biscuit. I buy the bread, roasted bread. I worry about. How is that? The mind becomes weak. Ridaya dobalia, weakness of the heart. And this is due to the environment, so association, the type of association we keep pretty much determines our future. How is that? <clears throat> because even in physics, there is this uh, principle of osmotic pressure when two, <clears throat> when two liquids are separated by a cell membrane, the strong solution draws the, the weaker solution. So each time we have an association, we're hanging out with somebody, we should understand what is going on uh, in, the subtle, in, in the subtle environment. And therefore, it is important for us to, to choose even our associations. And sometimes we tend to think that, <clears throat> no, my my friends are favorable to Krishna consciousness or <laughs> even my parents are favorable to Krishna consciousness so I should go and hang out with them. I've seen a lot of that. Some brahmacharis. I've seen a lot of that. And later they got married. Because the environment impacts on our behavior. And it's not just only a devotional principle. It is a scientific principle. Professor Lewin, the German psychologist, developed the field theory. And it demonstrated how the environment impacts on behavior. Impacts on our values. See, <clears throat> if you put on, during the, in the heart of the winter, you put on, say, five thick jackets. <laughs> five five real thick, the thick jackets. Are you going, go out, okay? <laughs> Be out for 15 minutes. And you see that despite all of those insulations, the cold penetrates in and touches your skin. That's the power of environment. And therefore, we have to understand why the Acharyas emphasize on association, Sangha. It matters a lot. And I remember when I joined the movement, <clears throat> when I read this uh, concept of association, I do understand from the scientific perspective, but then when it was <clears throat> re-echoed in the Vedic literature, I was really very scared of associating with family members. You know what? For 16 years, one six years, I never, ever saw any member of my family. I was the same country. Because I was so much scared when I read about this. And I do understand the scientific implications from the theories that I know about. So yeah, the type of association we keep will uh, determine the future of our devotional values. And so here, <clears throat> Vidura <clears throat> has approached material Rishi. And in the Bhagavatam, you find that there is always some form of dialogue. Someone is make, uh, someone's making the inquiries, and the other simply uh, person is responding to inquiries. This is how the learning in the Vedic literature or in the Vedic tradition, uh, is enunciated. It is not that the person who is asking the questions is dumb, but he asks questions to be able to clarify issues and for the benefit of people yet to be born. <coughs> they will find also in the case of Arjuna and Krishna, it's not that Arjuna is dumb. But he was asking questions for the sake of posterity. And so we can't say we don't have the tools. We have the tools. And within all of these texts, demonstrations 
are enunciated to be able to convince us even further that yes, if I follow this path and follow <clears throat> and adhere to the uh, to the tradition, follow up the, with the strategies. Because see, you can initiate a change without following any model. <laughs> and in, and I, I've seen this a lot in Iskot. Even in Asaba, you know, we, I see very brilliant devotees, they, they propose, they make a proposal. And the proposal is not, is not backed up with any model. And so it's not scientific and it's just people will reject it and all, all it will fall apart. So we have models in our system. So people like Vidura, they are good examples for us. And if, going, uh, if you look at the background, Vidura, and what was his, what was his past life? Yes? Yamaraj. Yamaraj? Yeah, Yamaraj. Who could say Yamaraj is just... Some, it's just after judging people and all this in bed, the demigods who are in different positions or executing different services, they are devotees of Lord Krishna. So, someone has to take bed. So why did Vidura leave, leave his position or Yamada leave his position or come as Vidura? What, why, why is that? To be born, not just an amazing situation. If he has a choice, would he choose that? No. But why? Why did he have to take that bet? Where he was minimized. Looked upon as someone inferior. Yes? I don't think they hear you. They want to take the association of devotees. Really? Anyone who supports that? Yamaras took bed at Vidura because he wanted to take the association of devotees. Yes. Anyone supporting that? Can you, is, you support it? Yeah. <clears throat> Yamaraj was cursed. He was cursed. Uh, the offense supposedly is not his fault, but as the leader, <laughs> again, these are the implications of leadership, you know. <laughs> you may say, well, I didn't know about it. Some of his agents tied up this sage and he was on his stake to be pierced with arrows before later Yamunaj realized the mistake and ordered for his release but the disgrace has already been met out to the sage this is grace has already been met out offense has already been committed someone innocent and you harass him you bully him You hurt him. In fact, one of our principles is that we don't eat uh, no meat eating. Is that? What does that no meat eating mean? Non-violence. What does non-violence mean? Now, you see, our system looks very simple, but it's very, very subtle and complex. Now, we don't, we don't commit violence. But what if you hurt a devotee? Isn't that violence? You hurt a devotee. Each time we hurt a devotee, we are committed violence. No, no, watch. Each time we hurt a devotee, we are literally breaking one of the principles. And that is why, look, if you analyze things in a very scientific way, uh, we are like endangered species. So to say. 
Yeah. How many times we hurt each other? We offend each other. And yet, you know, we are on the path of bhakti. Bhakti means to link up with Krishna. I mean, yoga means to link up with Krishna. Bhakti yoga means to link up with Krishna. But when we hurt the devotee, we are creating a disruption in our linking up process with Krishna. Sometimes, see, this is, this text is a purely a Rasika Bhava text. We can't go into those, you know, a devotional exorcism. We are not there. And as it sounds like I'm lost, it mentions, just gives a hint about what the chanting can do. The chanting can produce that pure love for Krishna. The chanting, this, this simple mantra that we are distributing everywhere, that is the easiest way to get pure love for Krishna in Kali Yuga. But even the simple chanting, uh, there are so many rules we have to follow. So sometimes people think, all oh, these Hare Krishna, there's two many rules. No bad. If, you, if we want to attain success in any venture, in any endeavor, we have to be meticulous. We have to follow details. And frankly speaking, our process is very simple, but we can make it very complicated. To the temple of love of Krishna in devotional service, especially what Prabhupada has given to us, is pretty clear. We chant Hare Krishna without offenses, we'll, we'll get there. But each time we hurt any devotee, that crying, each time we hurt a devotee, that uh, the chance of attaining that level where we can cry for Krishna. You know, Gogo Vinda Swami, he used to, he is very fond of giving, uh, emphasizing on this point. You cry for, are you crying for Krishna? You cry for Krishna. <laughs> yeah. He's emphasizing. So, yeah. I was sharing with, some, uh, with these devotees at the Soho, how I was in Montreal some time ago, and one devotee was leading a group of brahmacharis, they're from uh, Toronto, leading a, a group of brahmacharis on traveling Sankirtan and Harinam. So the leader, he came to me, and he said, Maharaj, what is, how, what is the best way to help these devotees who are traveling with me? I said, oh, very simple. You, sh you should treat these devotees traveling with you Treat them the way you will love your beloved younger brother. And he looked at me right in the face. And he said, Maharaj, this is very difficult. I said, what is the difficulty? You sit on the other side and you say, Mama, if I'm so jiva loka, jiva buddha sanatana. It means we are one family, Krishna family. Krishna said, Everyone is, is passing parcels. Is that not what you said? He said, yes. So why are you saying it's very difficult? Implementation. We can speak very nicely. But if you can practice even one sloka in the Vedic literature, that will give us a big leverage. So yeah, we're seeing how Lord Krishna, he loved Vidura so much. That was his thought when he was, the Vidura was on his mind, well, in his thought when he was living. We can also develop love for Krishna that at the time, that is at the appropriate time, if we will forget Krishna, Krishna will come to the rescue. You see, the perfection or the devotional perfection does not necessarily mean that you have to struggle, we have to struggle on our own to become 
hundred percent pure. It's very difficult to struggle on our own to become hundred percent pure. But when we take shelter of a spiritual master who is guided by <clears throat> a proper uh, a teachings. In fact, the ver- one of the, uh, I think the third, the third offense in chanting, we recite it at the most temples, they, they recite these 10 offenses every day in the morning. The third offense, what was it? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a joke. I remember, <laughs> I remember cases of where, People just take initiation and they, they zoom out. They go on their own. So we should think about the next step in our devotional culture. These are the things enunciated by Lord Krishna himself. That vidi panipatena. We should approach it's not that the spiritual master has passed away. No. Approach now. It's a simple language. Approach means the person is... Yeah, you, you don't approach someone, approach a person, a person who is passed away. Approach means the person is alive. So devotional service is all about relationship. Reviving our relationship with Krishna. But what about our relationship with the devotees? Yes, so it's a simple process. We should not complicate it. We should not make it complex. First, we have to try to see how we are becoming more connected with the devotees around us. Why? Because the service to the devotees around us is even more important than service to Krishna. That's what Krishna said in the Padma Purana to Arjuna. And so, yeah, if you read the nectar of devotion, it's full of all these nectars about devotional ecstasy, loving ecstasy, pure love. But we are not there. We're just struggling to even get to the clearing state of chanting. That 32 syllables mantra, that 32 syllables maha mantra, is what can carry us to that level. All that we need to do is to seriously follow what has been prescribed in or in a bid to attain in that level. And fundamentally, the ten offenses is there. Oh, yeah. I remember somebody was, somebody approached me, he wants us to do this, wants us to do that. So I asked him, <laughs> Have you spoken with your Guru Maharaj? <laughs> so some people, they just have a Guru for, you know, for the sake of a name. And he bluntly told me, there's no need. Why? I mean, it's like someone who has a wife and is acting as a paramahamsa. Why you have a wife in the house and you are not being attentive to her needs? Or you have children and you have not been attentive to her needs? Why you marry? Why you have to accept a spiritual master if you are not ready to take shelter of him? Because this is the simple way to be able to clarify our ambiguities and uh, pave way to that level where who can cry for Krishna following the, the, the request of Gogo Swami Maharaj? So people have attained that level. I remember one past time I was reading about Prabhupada, and you know, one devotee went to, meet, uh, went to see Prabhupada. I think that was in LA or something. I went to meet, I went to meet Prabhupada, and when he went, he paid the business and he found that Prabhupada you know, was shed in tears. So he was disturbed. He asked Prabhupada, uh, what, what, what's going on? What, what's the problem? And then Prabhupada.